Hello everyone, this is Noel from the Capital Hermes Healing Channel and I would like to wish you a belated, very, very happy Thanksgiving Day which was yesterday and I spoke to a number of people in America and they were having an absolutely fantastic time uh, and having a, making a great day of it all a very, very special day, Thanksgiving Day uh, I'm an Englishman but it holds a special place in my heart to actually be aware of what occurred on that day. Uh, absolutely wonderful. And this is a little talk about an English uh, short story writer and a poet called Catherine Mansfield. And she was born in New Zealand and came to London uh, as a young woman aged 19 and became part of something which was known as the Bloomsbury Group. And its most famous members were Virginia Woolf and the English novelist D.H. Lawrence. Uh, the lady we are looking at, Catherine Mansfield, became close friends both with Virginia Woolf and D.H. Lawrence. She actually established a career for herself as a short story writer and she is regarded uh, to this very, very day as one of the greatest short story writers ever. And she was part of a movement which became known as the Modernist Movement. And the theme of her work was anxiety, sexuality and existentialism. In her mid-twenties, she met the English philosopher John Middleton Murray, of whom she married. Uh, Catherine Mansfield was bisexual, but she did marry and it wasn't a particularly happy marriage. And in her late 20s, she was diagnosed with pulmonary, pulmonary uh, tuberculosis and given a couple of years to live. She went through all the medical procedures, the normal ones, all the medical institutions, and they all failed her miserably and her condition deteriorated. So what she decided to do, to do was go and stay with a person called George Gurdjieff, who was regarded at the time uh, as one of the world's greatest esoteric teachers and philosophers. And he had a study centre outside of Paris in Fontainebleau, and it was known as the Priory. All those around uh, Catherine Mansfield were vehemently against her going because the treatment that she would be offered would be totally and utterly unconventional. Her husband, John Middleton Murray, railed against the going. Close friends, family members did. But it was a last resort for Catherine Mansfield, our short story writer, as she had not only developed tuberculosis, she didn't want to be part of a world which she regarded as being very, very fickle and very, very insincere. And artificial and she wanted to find some semblance of reality. So the last year of her life was spent at Gurdjieff's Institute at the Priory and the main reason for this particular broadcast is that she wrote a letter to her husband John Middleton Murray which has become not so much famous but very very highly regarded in esoteric spiritual circles and the title of the letter is The Two Streams. And I'm going to read it to you now. The Two Streams, a letter by Catherine Mansfield to her husband, John Middleton Murray. Quote, uh, Dear John, there are two streams in life. 95% of people are in the upcurrent stream all squashed together, asserting themselves and fighting the current. This has been this way since the year dot, and always will be. It is actually done for cosmological reasons. This I found out whilst uh, spending time here with Gurdjieff and his followers. The second stream, opposite the first stream, is the going with the current stream. This is where all great art and development of the finest kind takes place. It is an esoteric stream, where real people are, where real things occur. 
only 5% are in this stream. Plato's cave analogy is saying more or less the same thing, but no one listens. The second stream needs to be hidden, otherwise mechanical forces from the first stream would destroy it, as we have seen throughout history. To get from the first stream into the second stream takes a Herculean effort, a massive jump, a quantum leap, and also requires help from those in the second stream. But it can be done, and it is being done as I speak. Whilst one is in the first stream, one cannot convince others that a second stream exists, a much better stream. The first stream is the Tower of Babel, and as the German writer Goethe so aptly puts it, whatever you may read in a hundred books or a lengthy fable, unless it's all held together by love, it will be nothing other than a Tower of Babel. True alchemy is fusing the disparate elements within oneself. This occurs by friction, in the retort of oneself, so that one can be alchemized into the second stream. The heat that creates the gold, the friction, the pearl in the oyster. Friction and suffering, if we know how to use them consciously, are the, the currencies which transform us into divine higher evolved beings, beings capable of loving and helping one another. I now know what Jesus meant when he said, first heal thyself, physician. What I left behind, John, wasn't worth having. It felt like I'd left a shipwreck behind, and I am now so, so glad to be here, no matter how long I may have left. End quote. And as I say, that is a letter by Catherine Mansfield to her husband, John Middleton Murray, and it was written in August of 1922 from her sickbed at the Priory in Fontainebleau at Gurdjieff Centre for the Harmonious Development of Mankind. And there is, within all the, of this work, there is a sort of a link, a thread, that runs through it of all the people who are involved, who have been involved. And the American architect Frank Lloyd Wright uh, was a member of a Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff group for most of his life, and he attributed a lot of his success to his time spent with the Gurdjieff group. This is Frank Lloyd Wright. And the lady who was looking after uh, Catherine Mansfield was called Ol Ogliviana uh, Hinson Insenberg, and this Ogliviana Insenberg actually became the second wife of Frank Lloyd Wright. So as I say, we have a connection running all the way through. And when I speak to friends and people I meet on this channel, they're quite amazed to discover that Frank Lloyd Wright was actually a member of a Gurdjieff group, uh, and he kept it very, very low profile, as a lot of famous members do. And there is a famous, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying, uh, there is a very, very famous singer in Britain who has been around for many, many years and is very well, very well established. And her name is Kate Bush. Uh, she had lots and lots of hit singles and so on. And she's been part of a Gurdjieff group for many, many years. And she says it's the best thing that's ever happened to her. And she's actually wrote songs about Gurdjieff. This is Kate Bush. Uh, the letter I've just read from Catherine Mansfield, I sent to a close female friend a couple of months ago. Hello, Melissa, if you're listening and you've got this far without falling asleep. I sent it to a lady by the name of Melissa, who'd been going through a very, very tough time with, in a, in a sorry, in a uh, disruptive uh, relationship with a partner, which had been going on for many, many years. Melissa awoke a number of years ago, spiritually awoke, and she tried to bring her partner along with her, and he resisted, 
and no matter what she tried to do, she couldn't get him over to the level of spiritual awakening that she had undergone. And this is exactly as 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 Mansfield says in the letter, going from the first stream into the second, you can't actually uh, force others into that stream unless they come of their own volition. And Melissa also tried to get her parents through and so on and to to spiritually enlighten them, all to no avail. And it eventually made her ill, as it would anyone, because you're going against the current and there's nothing you can do unless a divine power enters and actually lifts the people out into the second current. And when I sent this to Melissa, she got back to me and she said, this is one of the most healing things I've ever heard. And one needs to go over it a number of times and let it actually sink in uh, to actually realise its importance in the healing process process of, of the individual. And she's now making a recovery uh, and healing from, from many, many years of hurt and pain in very, very wrong relationships. Uh, and since the beginning of time, esotericism and higher knowledge and so on has always been collected together in very, very small groups and they work very, very hard to see that it's distributed to as many people as possible. But Mr. Uspensky, who was the pupil of Gurdjieff, he said you can't force people with machine guns to actually accept the teachings, which you obviously can't. And as Mansfield said, uh, the second stream is actually hidden from the first because the first would actually destroy the second one if it found out about it. And all great teachers, ascended masters, enlightened souls and so on, uh, when they've become public, they've become persecuted. The prime example, example being Jesus Christ. He was actually crucified, wasn't he? Uh, and there is, a, there is a battle going on bef between forces of light and spiritual development and goodness and those of darkness, which are against the development of the individual human soul. It's actually a battleground out there. But uh, forewarned is forearmed. And this, as I say, this young lady we're looking at is, at, is, at is Catherine Mansfield. And she passed away at the age of 34 after spending a year with Gurdjieff. And she said it was the best year of her life. Uh, as I say, she said she was leaving a shipwreck behind. And she was very, very glad to be here. And at times I think to myself, this is so sort of up in the air and uh, highly out of the ordinary ken of things. Uh, am I actually doing right to be so involved with it? And my experience tells me that I am because I've been involved for 30 years and I've tried to get other people involved. And if one has not been introduced, it's a very, very arduous process. Uh, but I will never stop trying. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is Noel in a London apartment with a siren on the, the street outside. You can possibly hear. Uh, I have a very cosy apartment here. It's quite spacious and sealed and I can sit and write and make my films and things. And I really, really value it. And I've been alone for a number of years, a couple of years since uh, my last relationship. And I have really, really enjoyed it. And I've got to that place where I can be alone and be very, very happy being alone. And it's, it's a very nice place to be. And there's a very famous quote from a uh, Austrian playwright called Hugo von Hoffmannsthal. And it's one of my favourite quotes of all time. And I will end the broadcast with this quote. We have far more friends than we know and we have far less than we would like to know. I like that. It's quite nice. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. And the people who have newly subscribed, well, welcome. Uh, it's very, very good to have you here. And uh, I enjoy what I do. I know it's not mainstream. Uh, it's very, very different. And I will keep plugging away. Although I'm not a plumber. Or maybe I should be a plumber. 
and not a broadcaster, actor, poet and playwright, whatever I, I consider myself to be. Uh, so it's goodbye from Noel, and it's goodbye from the short story writer Catherine Mansfield. Anyone into literature, do a Wikipedia. I'll put some information in my description box. On, do a Wikipedia on Catherine Mansfield, and all the information will come up. And her short stories are absolutely incredible. And I think she has about a couple of dozen, a couple of a dozen poems which have been published as well. She was very, very highly gifted, highly talented woman. Uh, I wish you well. And if you're on a spiritual journey, it's something that takes time. And as long as we never give up, because the four most important words in any language are never, ever give up because you're giving up on yourself. I think that was more than four words, wasn't it? Lots of love to you. Have a very, very nice day, evening, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye for now. Bye.